Young, Gato Gonzalez from Mexico City. There is his record according to Ring Magazine. He is ranked number two by the WBC, number four by the WBA. Andy Gannigan, 28 years of age, from Hawaii, in his last outing against Manuel Abadoy. Another tough Mexican, a knockout victory for Gannigan, who has now stopped 29 of his 33 opponents in the win category with only two losses. He is ranked number four by the WBA. And this champion of the WBA, Sean O'Grady, there on the green trucks, will be our special guest commentator at ringside this afternoon. This should be an explosive, lightweight fight from the Forum in Inglewood, California. We will be bringing it to you today. Gato Gonzalez from Mexico City, Andy Gannigan from Hawaii, coming up live on CBS Sports Saturday. All right. Live here at the Forum in Inglewood, California, for this lightweight bout between Gato Gonzalez and Andy Gannigan. Hello, everyone. Tim Ryan with Gil Clancy, as usual, on our boxing coverage here at ringside, and a special guest commentator this afternoon, the WBA light heavy, lightweight champion of the world, Sean O'Grady. He gave you a few pounds there, Sean. This should be an exciting fight for the fans. We all know that. They're both exceptional uh, knockout punchers. For you, a special interest because one of these guys could be your opponent. Absolutely. Sometime in the near future, one of them may be a uh, possible opponent. I don't know if I'd like to fight here, though, because, uh, as I said before, the Mexican crowd, the Mexican-oriented crowd, is very hostile. Uh, Gato Gonzalez is a fighter that throws a lot of hooks. He throws a lot of punches on the outside. Gannigan's got to stay on the, on the outside. He's got to throw punches on the inside and let uh, Gato Gonzalez's punches hit him on the shoulders, on the gloves, and on the arms. Uh, now, the southpaw stance of Gannigan is going to give Gato some trouble, but I know that Gato Gonzalez has been working out with a, with a very strong southpaw. All right, Sean. Well, we've got two punchers in there. There's no doubt about that. Our Gil Clancy has a special report on the punchers. These are two of the exciting young fighters in the lightweight division today and are among the many outstanding punchers at 135 pounds. The unbeaten young Mexican, Gato Gonzalez, who has stopped 16 of his 17 opponents as a pro. And the veteran, Andy Gannigan from Hawaii. As a former manager, we learned to categorize fighters. Some are categorized as runners, others as boxers, and still others as punches. Punches are the kind of fighters that can change a fight around with one punch. Managers usually like to avoid putting their fighters in with punches. Even though they may think their fighter is a three or four to one favorite to win a fight, one big punch can change everybody's career. Now punches, like sprinters, are born, not made, in my opinion. You can teach somebody to punch a little more correctly, but they're born with that God-given power. And they can change things around in a hurry. For example, in the Tate fight with, with Weaver, Tate was winning all the way, looked like he was going to breeze in, and in the 15th round, one punch changed the lives of an awful lot of people, and Weaver walked out the champion of the world. Andy Gattigan shows what one punch can do in a rematch against Roberto Vasquez, who had knocked him out previously. This time it was revenge for Gattigan. Gato Gonzalez, early in his young career, a knockout victory over Ignacio Jimenez. And Gannigan again, against tough Curtis Ramsey. Gannigan showing the knockout ability, but punchers can be vulnerable to getting knocked out themselves. All right, there are a couple of problems with the big punches. Most of them come around and in the four and the six round class, everybody they hit on the chin goes. However, all of a sudden they're up there fighting 10 rounds and boxing's an elimination process. And most of the guys that fight 10 round fights can take a punch. Now, I've seen those big punches. They get into their first 10-round fight. They've had 22 or 23 straight knockouts. All of a sudden, they're in a 10-round fight, and they hit the guy on the chin, and he doesn't go. And I've seen these guys, they just deflate like a balloon. And the reason for it is very simple. They've always relied on that big punch, and they've never really learned their trade, and they just don't have the stamina to be around in a 10-round fight. That's what makes for the big upsets in boxing. And now, another problem that you have with a puncher is the fact that most good punches can't take a punch. There have been exceptions, of course, the Rocky Marcianos, the Joe Lewis's, but that's what made them champions of the world. A puncher, when he goes into a fight, is usually too tense. He's all tight, and when you hit him, instead of him hitting you, it's like hitting a board rather than a rubber band. And he goes when he gets hit. Didn't figure to go too long. Two great punches, neither one has too much boxing skill. 
anywhere from one to five. All right, how far do you think it'll go, Sean? I agree with Mr. Clancy. There's going to be a death storm in the center of the ring, and when the dust clears, the, chain, the winner will be on top. All right, well, we're looking for explosive action upcoming in this lightweight bout between Gato Gonzalez, the hometown favorite adopted son here in L.A., against Andy Gannigan. 33 victories, two losses, 29 KOs. In his two losses, he was knocked out. Gonzalez, 21. Gannigan, 28 years of age. And here is our ring announcer, Jeff Timpkins. Inglewood, California. Promoted by Dr. Jerry Buss. Matchmaker, Don Frazier. Your officials for this afternoon, judging a ringside. Chuck Hassett and Dr. Jin Kin. Your referee man in charge, Marty Denkin. Your ringside positions, Dr. Michael DeLuca and Dr. Roger Phil. And timekeeper coming at the knockdowns, Cliff Goss. We're all set to go now. Your main event of the afternoon, 10 rounds or less, lightweight. Out of the white corner, from Honolulu, weighing 136 pounds, 32 and 3 as a professional, ranked number 4 in the world by the WBA, Andy Ganagan. And on my right, from Mexico City, and a half from uh, Jeff Timken. Gato Gonzalez with his partisan Mexican-American crowd. Unbeaten, he's created plenty of excitement. He's coming off a victory over the very respected Vilamar Fernandez. The referee with the instructions is Marty Denkin. Denkin will be scoring along with the judges Chuck Hassett and Dr. Jim Jin Kin. They are from Los Angeles. Gannigan from Waipahu, Hawaii. And very popular, of course, in Honolulu, where he has fought all of his professional fights but one. That one being here in Los Angeles, the reason being that they say that they just couldn't earn enough money coming over here to fight. This is a big purse for him, and he was happy to come and have this opportunity against the exciting young Mexican, Rodolfo Gato Gonzalez. Tim Ryan with Gil Clancy and Sean O'Grady. We are underway in round number one, scheduled for 10. Well, Gonzalez in red. Gonzalez in the Red Trunks uh, weighed in yesterday at 12 o'clock noon. He weighed 137. That was uh, one pound over the contract limit. He finally made the weight after uh, an hour of sweating. Uh, he made the weight of 135 and uh, a half. The contract went red for 136. But the mistake, came right the mistake, in on it. The mistake was that there was two different contracts made. Well, that happens in boxing along with some other things. <laughs> but that should not for uh, half of his performance today at all uh, because they weighed in so early. Tim, I'd like to say nobody should go to, ref to the refrigerator while any of these rounds are on, because any time one of these guys can nail the other one, and we can have a lot of excitement. Gannigan told us that uh, he would not be coming out looking to take Gatto out in the first round, only if the opportunity were there, obviously, but that he wanted to see what Gatto was going to do. He expected Gonzalez to swarm after him so far in the opening minute. That hasn't happened. They've been starting out like a pair of boxers. We doubt this will last very long in that respect. Gannigan, who uh, is leading with his uh, right, he is the southpaw. He's got a lion tattooed on his back. I've never seen that before. Andy Gannigan, a colorful performer, so popular in his home state of Hawaii. Filipino descent. Lives in the sugar plantation area on Oahu. Known as the sugar man, and he just landed a good left inside. Gonzalez will throw that punch. You just saw that right hand starting it near the floor. That's one of his favorite punches. Gilt, he's a little bit like Aaron Fryer. He throws him from all angles. That's right. They faint one way, and then the punch comes from another direction. The thing is, he's boxing a southpaw. Now, I don't know how many southpaws he's boxed, 
that may have some effect on his on his performance today. Well, we're told he's fought three as a professional. Knocked them all out. A minute to go in round number one. Scheduled 10 round lightweight bout. Gannigan has got to try to be fast and uh, make Gatto miss those big punches. Gatto pulls his punches way back. And when he does, Gannigan's got to move. He can't stand there and let Gatto hit him on the chin. Gannigan indicated to Gonzalez that Gonzalez had hit him low. And then he fired one right back at him. The only blemish on Gonzalez's record is a technical draw. He stopped Herman Montez. And then after they looked at videotapes, after the fight, they ruled he had been stopped by a low blow, so they called it a technical draw. Tim, they're both throwing bombs now, especially Gannigan. He was the guy that was going to take it easy in the first round. He's taking chances, throwing some big punches. Rudolfo Gonzalez has got the best lateral movement I've ever seen in a Mexican fighter. The lateral movement that I'm talking about is side to side. Final seconds, round one. Number two of the scheduled 10 round lightweight bout. The number two ranked Gato Gonzalez in red. Andy Gannigan, number four ranked by the WBA in gold. I thought Gannigan had a pretty good first round, Tim. He was maneuvering Gonzalez out of position and threw a couple of pretty good punches in there. Gil Clancy with WBA lightweight champion Sean O'Grady. Here at ringside, we are live from the Forum in Inglewood. Sean, is this where you wanted Gannigan to stay during the fight, stay outside like that and then try to move in quick and back out again? Gannigan is moving in much more than I thought he would. He, uh, I figured that uh, he would move more to the side. There was a uh, low blow. Referee Marty Dinkin tells uh, Dr. Gonzalez to keep him up. But uh, I figured that uh, uh, Gannigan would move much more. Instead, Gonzalez is the one moving. That's right. Gonzalez exactly. looks a little uh, uh, wondrous about uh, his opponent, Andrew Gannigan. Right. He seems to be respecting Gannigan at this stage of the game. Absolutely. Maybe he's having some problems with that uh, southpaw style of Gannigan. And he may have felt Gannigan's punch. You know, sometimes when you block a punch, you get hit with a solid punch. Gonzalez's best win so far have been against Vilmar Fernandez, his last outing, and a tough uh, Herman Montez. Gannigan with victories over Robert Vasquez. After he'd been knocked out by Vasquez, he came back to beat him, and a good win over Curtis Ramsey, former North American champion. Didn't fight for that title when he was supposed to, and it went to Sean O'Grady. He's since added the WBA World Crown to his laurels. He'll be with us next week, June 20th, for the WBC Lightweight Championship, Arguello and Watt. Minute to go, round number two. Left hand lead from Gannigan scored. Left hand counterpunch from Gannigan scored. And that seemed to rev up his motors. Good left hand by Gannigan. Rock Gonzalez in his corner. Gannigan is taking it to Gonzalez in this round, and you just saw Gato Gonzalez miss with the left hand, and the crowd roared even though he missed. So that's what kind of partisan crowd we have here in the uh, forum in the Inglewood. No question about that. <laughs> really no question about that. That's in 30 seconds to go. Round number two. I'm surprised that Gannigan is not using that left jab or that right jab more. A southpaw that jabs a lot is very hard to fight. Well, he's looking to wing that big punch, Sean. Round number three, Tim Ryan with Gil Clancy and Sean O'Grady at the Forum in Inglewood, California. Gato Gonzalez in red, Andy Gannigan in gold. Gannigan, as we see it, had the best of the first couple of rounds. Gonzalez so far has not been the Tiger or the Super Cat, as he's known here, Super Gato in Los Angeles thus far. He's obviously showing some respect for Andy Gannigan, and properly so. Gannigan keeps waiting for that big punch, too. He may have been reading the uh, news articles here in Los Angeles. They uh, pumped him up very well as a big puncher. And he's sitting waiting for that big uh, left hand that's uh, his knockout punch. Gannigan looks like much more the, the cooler and the more experienced fighter right now. Gatto is really a little awkward and he wings his punches. 
Gato is very excited. Mandatory eight count. And they're ready to go again. The first man to the canvas, Gonzalez, here in round three. That was a straight left hand by uh, Gannigan, and he landed it right on the button of uh, Gato Gonzalez. Gonzalez's feet are in the bucket, and down he went. Now Gonzalez comes back with a good right hand. Good right hand. It snapped back the head of Andy Gannigan. You know, when he landed that left hand, he pumped two left hands. The first one was a range finder, and right behind it, he came back with the big one. He's, he's maneuvering Gonzalez out of position right now. That's why he knocked him down. As you pointed out, Sean, his feet are out of position. He's right, back on his go. heels a little bit. That's why he went down. Right hand grazed again. Again, he just saw it at the last instant. He lands a left and another one. And a good right Same hand back right from hand. Gonzalez. Gonzalez rocked again again with a countering right. Under 30 seconds to go. Round three. This is the war everyone expected. Another low blow and Gannigan looking to the referee in complaint. The one draw on Gonzalez's record was uh, acknowledged by the commission as a low blow. Good left hand from Gannigan to the chin of Gonzalez. Final second. And Gonzalez back. CBS Sports Saturday will continue after this word from your local station. Uh, you'll notice in the knockdown... The Gannigan, he maneuvers Gonzalez right in, in front of him so he can hit him with that left hand. There's the one left hand and there's the, the double left hand and down he went. He just gets him out of position. The speed are even and when you hit a guy when he's like that, down he goes. Round number four upcoming. There's Andy Gannigan from the island of Oahu in Hawaii. He scored a knockdown at round number three. So a bit of a surprise certainly to the partisan Gonzalez crowd the way this fight has gone so far. There's blood in the uh, mouth of uh, Gato Gonzalez. His mouth is cut somewhere. The motion you can hear in the background when we return was for the appearance of Fernando Valenzuela, the Dodger pitching star is in attendance, along with the usual number of celebrities at an L.A. sporting event. Elton Baylor, and the Lakers star, actors Artie Johnson, comedian Stoey Mitchell, many others. Gannigan in gold, Gonzalez in red. Up to this point, it's been Gannigan's ex experience that has proved the difference. He's fought a much better class of opposition than, than Gato Gonzalez has. And it's, it's proving right now. He looks very confident, too, he, as he has right from the start. Well, my feeling now in this fight, I don't think that uh, Gonzalez can win by a decision. He's going to have to get Gannigan out of there. He's going to have to land that big bomb that everybody talks about. Down four. The other fight attack. is just a little too smart for him. I'm surprised that neither man has jabbed because uh, the most effective in weapon in boxing is the left jab, or the jab. Uh, Gannigan's right jab and Gato Gonzalez's left jab. It sets up everything. It starts everything. It gets your opponent in position, and neither man has used it. That's oh, the Sean, it's just not their style. They're, they're both wingers. They both have all that big, that, those big knockouts. 90% of their fights have ended in knockouts. Nobody, a lot of people didn't think this fight was going to go this far, and here we are, fourth round. Bill Clancy and Sean O'Grady ring oh, another low another blow. Low blow. That was very low. I'd like to alert our stations again along the line. There'll be a 30 second station break at the end of this fourth round. And Gannigan continues to take the fight to uh, Gato Gonzalez. Yes, he does. He's, he, he's not backed up one step yet. <laughs> he's winging, but you know, when you're coming in like that, Sean, he better not get nailed coming in. Under a minute to go, round four. Gannigan wings his punches, and when he does, he pulls back. And there's a good left hand by Gannigan. Right Take over one. the top and landed right on the button. It rocked Gonzalez, but he kept his balance. But Gannigan pulling it on another good left hand from Gannigan. That southpaw style has really bothered got though, Gonzalez. Gannigan's maneuvering him right out of, out of position for him to land the punch and for Gannigan to be in punching position. Well, we said Gonzalez had fought three southpaws in his young career, but of course, none of them in the class of Gannigan. It was earlier on against uh, far inferior opponents to Andy Gannigan. Beautiful move just then by Gannigan. He uh, slid to his right and then came over the top of uh, Gato's right left hand. CBS Sports Saturday will continue after this word from your local station. Now with Gannigan on the attack, Sean. Gannigan keeps using that uh, right jab, and then he came over the top with that left hand. He hits with it, and he turns that hand over, 
put just a little more power on it, and Gannigan ran right into it. Hit him right on the bridge of the uh, nose and then down on the chin. Gonzalez ran into it, the men, I know. In round number five coming up, we are live from the Forum in Inglewood. Sean O'Grady, Gil Clancy, and Tim Ryan describing this, a fight that uh, many figured would not be into the fifth round so far. As we see it, it's been Gannigan in control, and he had the knockdown scored in round number three. The referee is Marty Denkin. And this is the fifth round. If Gonzalez, in my estimation, if Gonzalez is going to get something started, he's got to get something started here because I think uh, Gannigan is way ahead by this point. I feel the same way, Sean. There's a good left hook by Gato Gonzalez, and the crowd roars. You know, there were a lot of people suspected Gannigan's chin, but he's got hit a couple of good shots in this fight, and it hasn't seemed to bother him a bit. Very good shots, but now I notice that Gato is shortening up somewhat. He's got to shorten up because he's got to hit the other, the other man. He's got to hit his opponent. If you can't uh, hit your man, how can you knock him out? Gannigan with 29 knockouts in his 33 wins. He was stopped twice. There was Gannigan. He, he just maneuvered Gonzalez out of position again. Gannigan on the attack, scored the left hand. Left hand of the body. And Gonzalez gets out of his corner. Very good work in that corner by Gannigan. He blocked all of Gonzalez's punches and then came back with combinations of his own, landing that big uh, left hand many times. Well, Larry Itchy knows he told me they, they brought the Gannigan here two weeks before the fight, which was a smart thing to do. They got him used to the climate out here, used to the people, and it's, it's showing. He really came to win. He didn't just come to collect a payday. Watching him in the gym, he was very relaxed and in terrific physical condition. That's clear. Gannigan, 28, 21-year-old Rodolfo Gonzalez. And again, a warning from the referee for the head work on the part of both fighters. Under a minute to go, round five. There was another lightweight champion by the name of Rudo Rudolfo Gonzalez from Mexico. In 1972, he won the title. El Gato, given that nickname by his Mexican fans back home, and then when he started to fight in L.A., it became Super Gato. A little American touch. That was more or less a slip. The crowd roared on that. Uh, Gonzalez threw a body punch, and it just... Uh, caught Gannigan off balance. Under 30 seconds to go, round five. These two sluggers unable to land the big one except for the knockdown blow from Gannigan in round three. And Gonzalez was up immediately. Final seconds of the fifth round here at the Forum in Inglewood, California. <laughs> round number six, Andy Gannigan in the gold trucks. Gato Gonzalez in red, now on the right of your screen. Ranked number two by the WBC, number four by the WBA. Gannigan, number four by the WBA, number nine by the WBC. They are obviously two legitimate top teners, no matter who's ranking them. And right now, perhaps Gannigan surprising a lot of the boxing aficionados here in L.A. That was a beautiful move right there by Gannigan. He took a step back, slipped the right hand of Gonzalez, came back with a double left hand of his own. 